Hey guys, I'm Heidi Preeb. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time here. Today I'm coming to you from the most brightly lit corner that I could find in the hotel room I'm currently staying in, and it felt like the right time to make a video that I've been thinking about making for quite some time. So shortly, I'm gonna be attending the wedding of two people who I think are beautifully well suited to each other, which is always a wonderful thing to witness, and I wanted to address what the difference is between compatibility, so two people whose lifestyles and personalities and values just naturally align, versus limerence, which is a topic that we cover extensively on this channel. So if you don't know what I mean when I say the word limerence, I will link a video in the description of this one where I go over what it is and how you can recognize it. But today what I predominantly want to do is make some distinctions between the feeling of meeting someone who you are super compatible with and excited about versus experiencing limerence or romantic obsession. Now, a comment I frequently get when I post videos about limerence is some version of isn't this just normal at the beginning of a relationship to feel like the sun shines out of someone's butt and you can see none of their flaws. Is that not just the honeymoon period? And I think that that's a fair enough question. So today I wanna to go over some of the questions you might wanna ask yourself if you know that you are someone who is prone to limerence to distinguish whether you are just happy about a new relationship or a new prospect or whether a developing crush is kind of falling into limerence territory. So there's this tweet that I remember going viral, I think earlier this year, that said, a crush is just a lack of information. And that's actually kind of the premise that I wanna base this video on. So when we first meet someone who we have a romantic interest in, it is of course natural to fill in a few of the blanks with fantasy and to do a little bit of imagining around what it might look like to be with that person. But for the rest of this video, I'm gonna break down how someone who is approaching a crush from a secure, I'm okay, you're okay worldview would fill in those kind of blanks differently as they get to know someone than someone who is developing limerence would. So I actually think there's a lot of truth to that tweet, right? When we have a crush on someone, it's often because we don't know that much about them yet. And we're thinking about them in a very favorable way. Now, the main difference here is that those who air more secure are going to go about filling in the blanks of what they don't know about their crush in a very realistic and measured way versus someone developing limerence is likely to strategically select pieces of information in the getting to know someone process that fits their fantasy around that person and unconsciously reject all evidence that does not fit their fantasy of that person. So without further ado, we're gonna go into five questions I encourage you to ask yourself that might help you pinpoint whether you're just forming the basis of a long-term, highly compatible love relationship or whether you're in the early or mid stages of developing limerence. So question number one, and in my opinion, this is the most important one. How big is the gap between the way that you think of your relationship in your mind versus the relationship that exists with this person in reality? And as a kind of litmus test for this, how would you feel if you had to confess to your crush all of the fantasies you have about them inside of your mind? Literally picture yourself doing that and see what comes up. And the reason this serves as a relatively good litmus test for limerence is because if you're non-limerent, so if you're at the beginning of getting to know someone in a relatively secure way, the way that you think of this person is likely to not be too many steps ahead of where you are in reality. So if you've had one or two dates with them and you're coming at the relationship from a more secure place, it's likely that the things you're imagining are what you're gonna talk about on your third date. You might have some kind of questions around compatibility or what they want out of a relationship or whatever it is. But what you're unlikely to be spending a lot of time doing at this stage, if you're coming at it once again from a more secure place, is spending a lot of time on fantasies that exist way in the future and feeling kind of attached to those fantasies already, right? So if I've had one coffee date with someone, but I walk away from that date with some elaborate fantasy about us getting married in a foreign country in a hot air balloon while a string quartet is playing from a hot air balloon that's hovering nearby, I would probably be pretty embarrassed to let that person know that that's what my thoughts are focusing on. However, if I'm approaching the relationship from a more secure place, there are gonna be natural curiosities that crop up about the person, but it probably wouldn't be that weird if you had to let them know that those were the things you'd been thinking about. If you have been obsessively thinking about romantic fantasies involving a person you've only had one coffee date with, 
it's likely that those fantasies don't have all that much to do with the actual person, because you probably don't know the actual person that well. Definitely not well enough to predict how they would behave if you were to spend the rest of your life together after the air balloon reaches the ground and you ride off into the sunset for your honeymoon. But let's say you've been dating someone for multiple years and you've gotten engaged. Now it's probably not that weird to disclose your wedding fantasies to them. Because even if you know you can't afford those things, the level of commitment that your relationship has does reflect the fantasy you're having. So again, there's no hard or fast rule here. Yes, it is normal, even if you are securely attached, to have a few thoughts and fantasies around what a life might look like with someone. That's also just part of the getting to know each other process if what you're looking for is a long-term relationship. But I really think the litmus test here does come down to if they could peel open your brain, look inside and see the fantasies that you've had about them, would you feel absolutely mortified because you've kind of been objectifying them inside your own mind? Or would you be like, yeah, I wish you weren't looking at my fantasies, but there's nothing really off the rails in there, right? Nothing that would make me want to kind of shrink away and disappear. And what I want to make clear at this point is that I'm not trying to shame any of us for experiencing limerence. In a lot of cases, it is a natural response to early developmental wounding. So just because you might feel a sense of shame around the thought of someone looking inside your brain and seeing your romantic fantasies, that doesn't mean that you are shameful or there's something wrong with you as a person. This is just about discerning when we are in reality versus when we are feeling pretty disconnected with it in our relationships with other people. And the end goal of this whole process is to stay more in reality so that we can develop healthier and more long-lasting relationships with other people in reality. And part of that process involves checking ourselves along the way when it comes to certain patterns of thinking about relationships that are maybe more instinctual for us. So question number two to ask yourself if you're trying to figure out, is this limerence or is it true love? As you're getting to know someone, particularly in the early stages, ask yourself, am I genuinely open to finding out information about this person that would disqualify them as a good romantic partner for me? Or am I kind of putting my blinders on and only seeing what I want to see about this person? The latter thought pattern tends to be a pretty strong indication that you're experiencing limerence, and I'll explain why in a minute, versus the former is a very healthy pattern for developing true intimacy. So for people who err more secure on the attachment spectrum, when they meet a potential romantic partner, even though they might look a little bit exciting and shiny at the beginning, they're keeping an open mind as they move along in getting to know someone around how compatible they are or are not with that person. Because they have that I'm okay, you're okay worldview, it doesn't feel like the end of the world if they get to know someone a bit and then find out, oh, I'm a good person and they're a good person, but maybe there are things we want that are different that would make us incompatible as long-term romantic partners. Or maybe our communication styles don't jive particularly well. Or maybe this feels more like a friend vibe than a romantic vibe. There is this kind of commitment to staying in reality and noticing green lights or signs that you are compatible with someone while paying equal attention to red and yellow lights. Now, in contrast, when you're developing limerence, I want to bring up again my favorite Dorothy Tenov quote, which is that limerence is above all else mental activity. So it's less about sussing out true compatibility in a relationship, and it's more about fueling our fantasy life that we're using to self-regulate. So when we are getting to know someone but limerence is online for us, we are more fixated on and attached to our fantasy about a person than we are to the relationship as it exists in real life. The relationship in real life for someone who is limerent is more of a jumping off point for fantasy. So it's actually really easy to ignore a lot of the red flags if your unconscious mind's primary goal is remaining limerent. Because seeing something that could potentially develop into a major issue down the line would really interrupt your fantasy. So you might be really quick to kind of push out of your awareness or ignore any red flags that you see when you're developing limerence. You're not truly weighing them out in an equal way and asking yourself, would this be a deal breaker down the road? And if so, what does that mean about the way that I need to approach the relationship now? 
if we want different things, if we have different values, if, if our communication isn't natural, if I don't like the way that it feels when we are spending time together and prefer when they go away and leave me alone to my fantasy about them, how seriously am I taking all of those things as indicators that the relationship is not a particularly compatible one? Versus how quickly do I want to forget about all that stuff because it's actually not that important. What's important is the way that I feel when I'm on my own thinking about this relationship. If that feels like the most important thing, it's highly likely that what you're experiencing is limerence rather than a genuine openness to getting to know someone new and waiting until you have enough information about your true compatibility levels, which often takes a number of months, to truly get deeply emotionally invested. That's gonna be a pretty big indicator of whether you're experiencing limerence or the beginning of love. Third question to ask yourself if you're trying to root out whether this is limerence or love, and this is one that I see as kind of downstream of the last question. So as you continue to get to know this person and develop a relationship with them, ask yourself, am I aware of potential problems that might arise out of this dynamic as well as non-delusional means of solving those problems? So what do I mean by non-delusional? Contrary to popular belief, people who are developing limerence do tend to notice areas in which their partner is not completely compatible with them or perceived flaws in their partner. But those who are limerent tend to idealize those problems or flaws and the solutions to them, as opposed to those who are more in reality in their relationships see their problems as genuine problems that they need to find solutions to. So let's say you and your partner want different things. Let's say you want a family and you find out that this person you're getting to know does not want one. A non-limerent solution to that problem might look like talking to them and making it known to them that that's a value of yours and checking out kind of how set they are on that value or whether it's something that's more of a maybe for them and making sure you keep that line of communication open as you go with the awareness that if your values diverge too much, you might have to end the relationship even if you really like them. In a limerent relationship, solutions to problems tend to sound more like thought patterns that go, I will just love them for the first time in a way that they've never been loved and then they will open up and change and see the beauty of love and they will want different things than they currently claim they're wanting. So a solution like this to a problem is not based in reality because you're not actually working out interpersonally where your value differences are and where things might break down. You're counting on kind of magic to happen. Or maybe you're telling yourself that these differences are not a big issue because actually you've just realized that all of your own wants and needs don't matter and the only thing you need to be happy is to be with this person. So you will just kind of throw out what you wanted for your life and just go along with whatever they want because actually the only thing that's important to you is the connection that you have with this other person. Thoughts like this tend to be based in limerent patterning, whereas in secure relationships, even in the excited kind of honeymoon stages, you stay grounded in who you are and what you want, and you have an awareness of where those things do and don't align with this other person's wants and needs. And you decide in large part how much to emotionally invest yourself in the relationship based on those early and ongoing signs of compatibility. And when problems arise in the relationship, they feel painful if you're coming at the relationship from a secure place because it sucks to be out of sync with someone who you really care about. But you're able to sit with that pain and that discomfort for long enough to find solutions with the other person to real problems as they come up. Versus in limerence land, any problems that arise are generally romanticized, a fantasy solution is sourced, and in real life, the problem goes unaddressed. Or in some cases, you might try to subtly manipulate the other person into behaving in a way that aligns with your fantasy version of solving the problem. When in reality, maybe you've never actually talked to them about it directly. So once again, insecure relationships, problems are acknowledged, the pain of them is felt, and they're usually brought up and dealt with explicitly with the other person. In limerent or fantasy relationships, problems are romanticized or ignored or delusional solutions come into the mix to allow you to stop thinking about them. Question number four to ask yourself, and this one is a little bit of an advanced question, but if you can get it right, it's gonna go a long way. This question is, what do I want from this person in reality versus what do I want from them psychologically? And how realistic is the thing that I want from them psychologically? So this one I will just explain with examples because I think that's the easiest way. In secure relationships, there are absolutely things that we want from people both practically and psychologically. 
So an example might be, if I'm in a committed partnership with someone, we might live together, we might pool our finances, we might have certain roles that we consistently play in each other's practical day-to-day -day lives. There's an amount at which we see each other, spend time together, and all of that is very quantifiable and real. Then there are the psychological expectations, right? So I might assume in a secure relationship that we're gonna be reasonably honest and emotionally open with each other. So I might rely on them for a certain amount of co-regulation. So I rely on them to be a part of this ecosystem that I have of people I go to to talk things through in an emotionally intimate way. However, in a limerent relationship, what you'll often find is that the psychological expectations you're placing on a person are incredibly high to the point of being completely unrealistic. So in my more limerent days, here are some of the expectations that I realized in retrospect I had on a particular limerent object. I want you to make me always feel good about myself. I want to always feel cool through knowing that I'm associated with you. I want to always feel desirable and good about myself based on knowing that you are a person who likes sleeping with me. Now, all of those needs are self-esteem needs, right? They're not really about the connection I have with the other person, they're about how I want to feel. So a lot of the time when we are feeling limerent and someone is not acting in a way that we want them to act in order to keep fulfilling one of those psychological needs, we're likely to get upset rather than having compassion for this other person's human experience. So in a secure relationship, I don't feel like it's my partner's job to make me feel good all the time. That's not the role that they play for me psychologically. Their role is more one of companionship and trust and emotional intimacy, which contains a ton of different feelings within it, right? But in limerent relationships, if we're getting our core self-esteem or psychological needs met through our idea of a relationship that we're having with this person, we're gonna get really dysregulated anytime they're not acting in a way that preserves the idea we have about ourselves through their eyes. So this actually very neatly leads us to point number five, which is something you want to be paying very close attention to, to determine whether you're experiencing limerence or true love is the following question. How different do you feel about yourself when you think about being loved by this person versus not being loved by this person? So if you are in a secure relationship, well, it is of course disappointing to lose out on a potential romantic connection that you thought was gonna be compatible, and it might feel like a bit of a blow to the ego. Generally, it's not gonna shake the core of your self-perception to have a relationship not work out, especially in the early stages. However, when we're experiencing limerence, what we're generally doing is projecting most of our self-esteem needs onto a fantasy relationship and telling ourselves, I am okay, as long as this person reciprocates my affection. So when they don't reciprocate our affection, it feels like all of our self-esteem is going out the window versus when they do reciprocate our affection, it might feel like we are on cloud nine and absolutely winning at everything. So the way we think about ourselves when we are limerent tends to fluctuate greatly with the attention that our limerent object is giving or not giving us. Versus once again, in a secure relationship, while our mood might fluctuate to a certain extent based on what's happening in a romantic relationship, our self-concept is not likely to fluctuate very much, if at all, in relation to whether this person does or doesn't like us. Because if we're truly trying to find a partner who we're compatible with, them liking us and wanting to be with us is one of the main things we're looking for. So if that's not present in someone we're dating, it's just gonna be a sign that that's not the right person for us, so maybe we recategorize them as a friend and move on to try to find someone we're more compatible with. Again, that I'm okay, you're okay worldview is present throughout the entire process. So if you're not compatible with someone as a secure person, it doesn't mean that you are a bad person, it doesn't mean you're unattractive or unlovable, it just means the vibes weren't all that complimentary. It's just a very natural outcome of dating around. You meet a lot of people who aren't a great fit for you, and you just learn a lot about yourself in the process, what your own needs and wants are, as well as what you like to give to a relationship, and you continue searching for a person who's more compatible with you. Versus in a limerent relationship where you might be unconsciously outsourcing a ton of your self-esteem needs onto your fantasy life that revolves around this other person because you're telling yourself, if I can get them to love me, then I am worthy, and if they don't, then I am unworthy there's going to be huge fluctuations in the way that you think about yourself, often day to day, depending on how that person is responding to you. And that's gonna be a pretty big indication that what you're dealing with is limerence rather than a genuine reality-based connection. Now, in the future, we're gonna talk about how to start breaking down these patterns of limerent thought. 
So how to make sure that when you're entering a relationship, you're staying relatively grounded and aware of whether you are and aren't compatible and using that real information to make important decisions about how to proceed in the getting to know someone process. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at those five questions I encourage you to ask yourself if you're trying to figure out, is this limerence or is it true love? As always, let me know in the comments what comes up for you as you do pose those questions to yourself, as well as any thoughts, feelings, experiences you feel called to share. As always, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other and your inner children, and I will see you back here again really soon.